Martin was quickest in morning practice. It's his first bud pole here at Bristol since August of 1996. Get this, in 13 of the last 14 races here, Martin has finished in the top 10. There isn't many NFL quarterbacks that can say they weren't sacked by Reggie White. Brett Favre is one of them, but Reggie says he'll take a win over a sack any day. When we come back, we'll take you to Spurrier Field. Am I allowed to say Spurrier? I guess this week I am, not next week, though. For Science Hill in Tennessee, hi. Kenny, after back-to-back 13-win -back seasons, the Titans, they want to return to the Super Bowl. That starts with hard work right here at training camp. But it wasn't all about hard work this summer. The Titans had some fun, actually some messy fun. Rusty, 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 can I get a word? Can I get a word? I couldn't catch up with Rusty, but we already know how he feels about Bristol. He hits a rocket. Where's it going to go? It is out of here. It's third of the afternoon and number 63. Unbelievable. What a day for Barry Bonds. 61, 62, and 63. That's the most home runs hit in the season by a left-hander. 18 games left. Eight away from breaking Big Mac's record of 60. Can he do it? More baseball later. Hi, everyone. I'm Phil Shaner. It only happens twice a year. Opening day and Super Bowl sun Sunday. It's the tacky NFL football time. It's around my neck right now. And yes, that means it's time for week one of the National Football League. Stealing a line from a famous judge. Let's get it on. Titans hosting the Dolphins. Early on, 17-7. Dolphins with the lead. Watch Lamar Smith just go right through this great Titans defense. We talked about how great the Titans D was in our show last night. They give up a long touchdown run. Steve McNair comes back, finds Kevin Mason wide open, makes it 24 to 14. McNair was hurt on this play, had to come out of the game. Neil Donald came in, and what happens? He throws an interception right to Zach Thomas. He goes all the way to the house for the score. Right now in the fourth quarter, the Titans losing 31 to 20. That's a great flip right there. Today, Peyton Manning and his Colts at the New York Jets. Manning, 21 years yard touchdown pass right here to Jerome Payton Manning 231 yards and two TDs this game had everything punt returns had even big linemen going 95 yards and fumble returns a high scoring affair the Colts win it 45 to 24 first round draft pick and former Virginia Tech quarterback Michael Vick playing today against the 49ers they put him in in spot situations with Chris Chandler the highlight of the day for Vic was this run. We know he can run the football. 25-yard run here. Had a couple of overthrows. Really didn't throw the football that well today. Only threw it four times. Game went to overtime. San Francisco needed OT. This field goal won it. The final 16-13, to 13, 24 yards out by Jose Cortez for the Niners. The Panthers starting an old rookie at quarterback. 29 years old, Chris Winkie, the Heisman Trophy winner. The Panthers and the Vikings, great start for the Panthers. Opening kickoff, Steve Smith, 94 yards all the way to the happy house. Give him six. How about Winky? 223 yards on the day, and this touchdown pass to Muhammad to make it 17-13. And the Panthers upset the Vikings 24-13. Unbelievable. Winky also ran in a touchdown. NFL Week 1 scoreboard. Green Bay wins. Amon Green 157 yards on the ground. Tampa Bay, they got a good defense. Still, They still don't have an offense. They win 10-6. Oakland and Kansas City, one of the best games of the day. The Raiders win it 27-24. New Orleans beats the Bills 24-6. Corey Dillon, 104 yards and a touchdown. That is not a misprint on your screen. The Bengals win an opening day game 23-17. That's unbelievable. Seattle wins 9-6. Baltimore, the defending Super Bowl champs, have trouble with the Bears, but they win 17-6. Jacksonville rolls over Pittsburgh 21-3. St. Louis and Philadelphia. Philadelphia comes back, sends the game to overtime. They lose by three. And San Diego and Doug Flutie beat Washington 30 to three the final there. Let's talk about the Vols. After last night's 13-3 win over Arkansas, the question is, is there any way they can beat the Florida Gators next week? Is the defense good enough to win? Yes. Is the running game good enough to win? Yes. Is the passing game good enough to win? You can't say yes to that question. At least it's not right now. Wide receiver Dante Stallworth, well, he's already out. And last night on this play, Eric Parker went down with a shoulder injury. So who are they going to throw the ball to? How about Kelly Washington and Elizabethan's Jason Witten? They stepped it up last night. The little bit of the passing game the ball has had. Casey Clawson continued to struggle. But running back Travis Stevens carried the load on the offensive side, tying a school record with 41 carries for 206 yards and scoring this game-clinching touchdown. The D was very good. Of course, playing without Big John Henderson, how good were they? Arkansas didn't make a first down in the second half and only 98 total yards. Coach Fulmer says he was happy with the team's defense. 
More from Coach coming up later as coaching show right after the newscast. Final day of the Bank of Tennessee Bridges Golf Intercollegiate Tournament. TCU, the defending champ, they had a big lead, and they continue to uh, rule the roost. They won today in the final round. Let's head to the scoreboard, 23 under. That's a new team scoring record. Southern Cal was 10 shots behind them in Oklahoma, South Carolina, Auburn. Tennessee, plus one. ETSU, the host, finished seventh, plus two. Individuals, two guys from TCU battled it out. ETSU's Best score tied for 11th was Kenneth Mills. He's a freshman. ETSU, a young team this year, but TCU wins the Ridges Intercollegiate PGA Canadian Open was won by Scott Verplank by three shots today. What a wild finish last night at Richmond. Virginia native Ricky Rudd won his home state. Rudd is in second place in points, 222 behind Jeff Gordon. But with 10 races to go, Rudd said it's not over till it's over. It's true. Jeff Gordon, I think he wanted to throw Bugs Bunny overboard last night. Bugs was not good luck for the 24 car. Let me show you why. Here on lap 35, Sterling Marlin puts points leader Gordon into the wall. A lot of damage to Gordon's car. He went behind the wall and came back out to finish 36 last night. Was a hit in the points. Now 100, 222 behind Ricky Rudd. Rusty Wallace was dominating the race all night long, leading 276 laps. But then things get a little wild. They call it the bump and run. Here Rudd does it to Wallace with 23 to go. Then watch Kevin Harvick do it to Rudd to get the lead for a while. Then Rudd does the same thing to the rookie. You're going to see it right here for the win of the Monte Carlo 400 Ricky Rudd. The bump and the pass for his second win of the season. Championship points, here's how they look. Jeff Gordon, your leader by 222. They've moved around a little bit. Dale Jarrett, third now. Tony Stewart, fourth. Sterling Marlin drops back to fifth. And Bobby Labonte, Jr., Harvick, Wallace, and Benson round out your top ten in championship points. Now to baseball. The great playoff race is on. Who will make the playoffs? Braves and Cubbies going at The Jones boys were at it today again. Andrew Jones, the long home run. Way out of the ballpark at Wrigley. How about another guy that can hit home runs? We talked about Barry Bonds. How about Sammy Sosa? Watch this blast. Good night. Get on out of here. 54 on the season. The Braves blew the lead, but they hold on to win as we head to the scoreboard. The final, the Braves win it 9-5. to five. They're now still three and a half games over the Phillies in the NL East with the lead because the Phillies won today 12-4. to four. The Cubs have lost five straight, by the way. The Cards pull within one half game of the Dodgers in the wild card race. St. Louis wins 8-1. to one. Houston's on fire. They have a six-game lead in the NL Central. San Francisco with Barry Bonds with those three home runs. They win 9-4. to four. And Arizona still has a one and a half game lead over the the Giants in the National League West. They win 8-2. to two. That'll do it tonight in sports. U.S. Open, you watched it right here on News Channel 11. And uh, Pete Sampras, everyone thought he would gonna, was going to win. The young Australian wins it. Uh, Hewitt takes it 7-6, 6-1, 6-1. Thank you, Al. The NASCAR world has grown over the years. It's now the number one spectator sport in America. You can thank Dale Earnhardt for that. For local racers who race every Friday and Saturday night, this is a sad day. Dale Earnhardt touched people's lives. Some cheered him, others booed him. The ones lucky enough to know the Intimidator personally will never forget him. Dale Earnhardt's been a friend of mine for 34 years. We raced back in the 50s on dirt tracks, you know. Dale come over from North Carolina one night and he's pink Thunderbird. <laughs> we had to make up money to get him back to North Carolina that night, get him enough gas, you know, and it's just, you know, just like we've lost one of the family. At B&B Auto Repair in Johnson City, Brad Teague was finding it hard to get his work done today. Everybody's called. I can't do anything. Uh, they're just calling right and left. And, uh, of course, everybody feels the same way I do. You know, a lot of them was against him, but they didn't want to see him get killed, you know. Uh, he is a person you, I guess, love to hate. Some of them did. But he was always my favorite. In 1978, Teague bought Dale Earnhardt's late model sportsman car, which Teague later raced at Daytona. You know, a lot of people said, well, it didn't look like he hit hard enough to get killed, but I've hit the wall at Daytona three times myself, and, and I thought after I, after, he's, after he's over with, I, I felt like, you know, I, I was such a hard lick, I don't see how it kept from killing me. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're watching it on TV, it's, it's not like being there alive and in the car, you know, uh, but I could tell he took a, a terrible hard lick. After a lick like this, where does NASCAR go from here? They will move on. They will continue to grow. The race this weekend at Rockingham is still on. But NASCAR fans and fans of Dale Earnhardt and the local drivers that know him told me the sport of NASCAR will never be the same. 
without the intimidator behind the number three. Alive in Bristol, Phil Shaner, News Channel 11 Sports. Al is replacing a Titans legend. Thanks, Kenny. There were some tight games last year for the Tennessee Titans. Seven games decided by three points or less. Games like that, well, they come down to the kicker. Last year, Al Del Greco didn't get the job done, so he's out, and Joe Nedney is in. Nedney is the NFL's traveling man. In six years in the league, Nedney has played for the Green Bay Packers, the Miami Dolphins, the Raiders, the Dolphins again, the Arizona Cardinals, the Raiders again, the Denver Broncos, the Carolina Panthers, and finally, the Tennessee Titans. Seven different teams in six years. It's something I've gotten used to. You know, I've, I've bounced around a lot in the league, but this is a little different for me because I'm not a replacement this year. I'm not a guy that doesn't have a lot of experience coming in. Um, I put up some good numbers next last year, and, and guys are expecting me to do well. And I kind of feel like I'm going out to battle with these guys. I'm part of the team, you know, and, and we're starting. We started from the beginning, and it's going to be a fun road. Nedney was perfect in extra points and 34 of 38 in field goals last year for 126 points for the Broncos and Panthers. Nedney has a strong leg, and after this summer's training camp, has confidence as the Titans' starting kicker. I'm hitting the ball good, and uh, the battery's working well. Snap, hold, kick, solid, you know, and with a line in front of us like that, I know our, we're ready to go. Field goal unit's ready to go, and uh, be looking forward to kicking a lot of extra points. Oh, my, misses to the right, and Baltimore celebrates. After being let go by the Titans, Aldo Del Greco said he wished he was kicking more extra points. Then game-winning field goals. Del Greco went on to say the Titans didn't score enough touchdowns and put him in tough situations. Guess what? That's the kicker's job, and Nedney says he's ready to fill that job. You know, part of part of the job description of a kicker is points. You know, we're not the leading scorers of the team for no reason. So every time I get out there, points are important. Whether the threes or ones, they all add up to a victory as long as uh, we put up more than they do. Kenny, you take a close look at the Titans' schedule. It is a tough one. Tampa Bay comes here. Jacksonville's much improved. Of course, Baltimore. So Joe Nedney knows that a couple of games just might come down to his leg, and he says he's ready for the challenge. About 10 years ago, number three met number two. We're, we're we met in in four. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, of course he worked, and we've been together ever since. Connie and Tony have just about everything in common, except when it comes to their favorite NASCAR driver. Then things get a little ugly. We don't watch the same race at the same time. We go to separate rooms. After a year, her and Hart's had over the last four or five years, she ain't got a lot to say. <laughs> Tonight, Connie, the Dale Earnhardt fan, did say I do to Tony, the Rusty Wallace fan. As much as you have been sitting together and witnessed the same before these great fans, by the power invested in me as a county clerk, by the laws of the state of Tennessee, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You can start your engine. <laughs> <laughs> A marriage of a Dale Earnhardt fan and a Rusty Wallace fan. The first test of this marriage will come Saturday night here at Bristol. If Rusty wins, will the marriage survive? I'll get back with you. Uh. <laughs> if Earnhardt wins, we sure will. You know, we might have remember, to cancel this. <laughs> remember all this last year, Curly Bonnie Earnhardt? Yep. I might rattle his cage right come Saturday night. <laughs> Some wedding notes. The wedding song was... Rocky Tom, you'll always be... You guessed it, good old Rocky Top. What else? The wedding colors, the bride in Earnhardt Black, the groom in Wallace Blue, the wedding party, Gordon, Martin, Stewart, Jarrett, all represented. The best man was a Jimmy Spencer fan. And last but not least, there was little Rusty. This is Hoot and Hoot Rusty. I'm after Rusty Wallace. <laughs> little Rusty there. Very high, son. You're on TV. At the Bristol Motor Speedway, Phil Shaner, News Channel 11 Sports.